Here's the easiest way to make stitches in Blender. Let's say you have an object like this one right here and you want to run some stitches from this side over around a corner and over to the other side. Now this object has been subdivided so we're going to use some of the geometry from this object to create a curve and we're going to use that curve for the stitches to follow. So first we're going to select some geometry and that geometry is going to indicate where the stitches are going to be placed. So for example I'm going to select this vertex right here. I'm going to control right click on another vertex up here and control right click again on another vertex on the other side. So this means that my curve is going to go from here to here, which means the stitches are going to start here, they're going to follow this path, and they're going to end here. So I'm going to press P and separate by selection. Now I have this geometry as a separate object. When you're using a curve, you want the curve to be very smooth, because if you have sharp corners, you might get some stretching on your curve. So just for good precaution, I'm going to press control one, and I'm going to apply one level of subdivision to this object. And now I have this very smooth mesh right here. I'm going to go to object, convert, curve. So now this is a curve. It's very important to place the origin at the beginning of this object. So I'm going to go to edit mode. I'll place the 3D cursor right here with shift S cursor to select it. Then I'll go back to object mode. I'll hit the object menu, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin for this object is right here at the beginning. Now I just have to create one sample of a stitch and I'm going to use an array modifier and a curve modifier to run it along this curve. So I can just add a simple cube. I'm going to scale this cube way down. I'll make it a little bit longer on the X axis and the lower face is going to be a little bit shorter so that I can extrude the sides down like this. Now delete the bottom faces and add some subdivision to this object. Apply the subdivision surface, add some smooth shading. Now you're probably worried about how many polygons we're going to get with this technique. This is super high poly, this is going to be laggy and inefficient. If that's your concern, then you're going to have to bake this as a normal map. I just made a video about how to do that. So the video that was uploaded before this one on my channel, check that out, you're going to learn how to do this. Now that we applied the subdivision surface modifier, and bear in mind, it's useful to apply the subdivision subdivision surface modifier because anytime you have multiple modifiers working together you might get some unexpected results so in this case we're just going to apply it to get it out of the way now we're going to apply a curve modifier because we want to test whether this object is going to behave correctly when we run it around the curve so select a curve object and let's see what happens it's very common for your object to snap somewhere else when you apply a curve modifier in this case my single stitch just snapped to the other side of the curve the reason for this is because every curve has a beginning and an end at the moment the beginning of this curve is on the other side and the end of this curve is on this side and this doesn't have anything to do with where the origin is placed so we're going to select this curve we're going to go to edit mode go to segments and switch direction now this is the beginning of the curve so now the object snaps to this part of the curve right now you can see that this stitch is inverted so the top of the stitch is facing in a direction where the bottom of the stitch should be facing the best way to fix this is to go to edit mode and since we have to invert the object we're just going to rotate it around the x-axis by 180 degrees you can also scale it by minus one on the z-axis Axis, but then you have to correct the normals with shift n now if you go back to object mode now the stitch is behaving properly so since the deform axis is currently x and you might have to change this sometimes you might have to pick one which works a little bit better we have to move this object along the x-axis for it to follow the curve and as you can see it's following the curve correctly so everything is fine now we can minimize a curve modifier menu and we're going to add an array modifier now it's very important to place the array modifier before the curve modifier the reason for this is that if you have the array modifier after the curve modifier blender is just going Going to take the object which is under the influence of the curve which means it's currently facing this way and it's just going to stack that on whatever axis you set like this this is not what we want we want to first stack the object and then we want to take that stacked stuff and wrap it around the curve so in this case since the object had to move along the x-axis to follow the curve we're going to set the factor to one on the x-axis and then just increase the count to whatever is appropriate now of course you're probably going to want to make these a little bit smaller and you might have to push them down on the z-axis a little bit so that they attach to the mesh a little bit better and then just adjust the count so you reach the other side of the mesh now you have some stitches around your mesh so you can just apply the array modifier apply the curve modifier and you can even duplicate this and place it somewhere on the other side as long as the mesh is the same on that part now if you bake this as a normal map you're going to be able to save lots of polygons because this mesh currently has a whole bunch of polygons now one of my loyal Patreon supporters, he sent me a model because he had some problems with the curve and ray modifier. He was trying to create some stitches on the inside of this mesh right here, but he got some weird stretches and the mesh is not behaving the way he wants it to behave. So the first thing I noticed is that the curve is not very smooth at all. Remember how I said that if your curve has sharp angles, you're gonna have problems. 
Well, this is one of the things that can happen because now your mesh can get very stretched out. So we're going to take this curve. We're going to go to object convert to mesh because now we can modify it as a mesh, which means we can add more geometry, which means we can make it smoother. So in object mode, we're going to apply a subdivision surface modifier and we're going to apply that so that it turns into geometry. Then we're going to go back to object mode, object menu, convert and convert it back to a curve. Now you can see that the stretching is gone, but we still have some very weird behavior on this mesh. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to correct the origins of these objects. We have to have the origin of the curve exactly at the beginning of the curve and the origin for the mesh should be at the beginning of the mesh. Then we have to make sure that those two origins are placed in the same place. So select the curve, go to edit mode, select the first vertex in the curve, shift S, cursor to selected, then go back to object mode, go to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now the origin for the curve is placed correctly. Then we're going to select the mesh. We're going to go to edit mode and we're going to make sure that the origin is placed correctly for this object. Now the origin is already placed pretty well, so we don't have to do anything about that. We're just going to place the 3D cursor to the beginning of the mesh and we're going to snap the origin of the object onto this curve. Now with all this twisting shit happening with this mesh and this curve, I notice that the direction of the curve is wrong. So I'm going to select the curve, go to edit mode, select everything, segments, switch direction. Now the curve is starting from the bottom. I also noticed that this mesh has some really weird rotation on it. So ideally you want to prevent this by not even rotating this. You just want your mesh to follow a certain axis. You never want to rotate this mesh in any weird way. And you can usually fix this by just rotating the mesh around what, some of the axes and seeing what works best. The X axis does not seem to help. The Y axis does not seem to help but the Z axis seems to kind of put it in a better place. So now we rotate the object around the Z axis to make it follow the curve a little bit better, but it's still facing the wrong way. So we have to figure out which axes we have to rotate it around so that it's facing a better direction. And in this case, if we rotate it around the Y axis by 90 degrees, it's going to be placed correctly. Now we can just adjust the count on the array modifier to get the right number of repetitions. And then we can bring this back into place and it's going to behave a lot better. In this case, we want these stitches to be three dimensional. So I'm going to add some extrusion. I'm going to delete the back side. This way I can correct the normals and I can apply some subdivision surface to this so they look a bit nicer. Then I noticed that I deleted the wrong side. So once again, I'm going to rotate these by 180 degrees on the Y axis. Now, if we just make some more minor adjustments here, like for example, we can reshape the curve so it fits the shape a little bit better, or we can place this a little bit better. These stitches are going to behave much better and the result is going to be much nicer. So let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you guys in the next one.